So Dr. Bott, thank you for joining me today. If you could just take me through some of your key highlights of this new scientific statement regarding the management of stable CAD in patients with type 2 diabetes. I'm really proud of this document about the management of stable coronary artery disease in people with diabetes that the American Heart Association has put together. I really have to commend them for taking on this important task and it was really a pleasure working with a number of different experts to assemble the highlights of the latest and greatest data in this rapidly changing area. There's been a lot that's happened in the past few years as it pertains to those with diabetes and stable coronary artery disease. And in this document, we review those data and try to contextualize the data and provide practical suggestions of how to incorporate the data. That's the most important part, of course. And we cover areas such as antithrombotic therapy, specifically how it pertains to people with diabetes who have stable coronary artery disease. We talk about blood pressure control, some of the controversies there about how tightly to control blood pressure or not. We, of course, go into lipid management with respect to cholesterol and triglyceride management. And we talk about glycemic control. And there's been a lot that has happened there, of course, with the SGLT2 inhibitors, the GLP-1 agonists. And our goal, at least, was to put together a document that would be useful for a variety of different healthcare professionals, primary care physicians, endocrinologists, cardiologists, nurses, pharmacists, really the full gamut of folks that might be involved in the care of patients that have both diabetes and stable coronary artery disease. And I think given just the wealth of data that's come out in the past few years, it's important for all these different groups to know how to incorporate the latest data. Otherwise, their patients won't be getting the best care. And there's, in fact, a lot to know that spans different domains. So it's not just cardiac issues or endocrinology issues anymore, because the care of people with diabetes really has become very multidisciplinary, in particular those that have coronary artery disease. So we cover all those different aspects of medical therapy, but also even percutaneous coronary intervention, surgical therapy, testing for those that have stable coronary artery disease in terms of assessments of ischemia and what value that might bring. So it's really the full gamut of management of the patient with diabetes and stable coronary artery disease, all the way from prevention to surgical intervention. And my hope is that readers will find the information useful to their clinical practices, and ultimately this will help improve the care of that important subset of patients with diabetes who also have stable coronary artery disease.